أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله المصطفى الأمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد Welcome to another episode of our tafsir page by page and inshallah ta'ala today we are upon on the second page of the second juz of the Quran page number 23 surah al-Baqarah in the previous episode, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we mentioned the verses concerning the story of the changing of the Qibla, the direction of prayer from Baytul Maqdis in Jerusalem to the Kaaba in Mecca. And we mentioned how this was a cause of consternation, a cause of, 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 of problem for the disbelievers of that time, whether it be from the Mushrikeen, from the disbelievers of, the, of Mecca and the Arabs in general, or whether the Jewish uh, tribes of Medina or the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites that were residing in Arabia. These groups of people had an issue with the fact that the legislation was changed, that you were following, as we said, the, the, the Muslims were praying towards Jerusalem from the beginning of Islam all the way up to about a year and a half approximately in the Medinan period. And then Allah Azza wa now commands them to face towards the Qibla. This caused for them problems and issues and they rejected it. And Allah Azza wa contrasts this with the believers who willingly accept and willingly uh, submit themselves to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal at the beginning of page number 23, he will mention to us that the real issue here is not the issue of the changing of the Qibla. That is one example of a commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is one tiny aspect of the Sharia of Allah Azza wa Jal. But when they make it into such a big issue, it is a sign that points to the larger issue and that is their rejection of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the acceptance of Islam and their rejection of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the bigger issue here. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the beginning of page number 23 in verse number 146, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبَنَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِّنْهُمْ لَيَكْتُمُونَ الْحَقَّ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Those who give scripture, or those to whom we gave the scripture, know it as well as they know their own sons. Those, Allah Azza wa Jal says, says, those people who were given the scripture, the people of the past, the people of the book, they know it as well as they know, uh, as well as they know their own children, meaning they know the truthfulness that the Prophet وسلم, has come with the revelation that he has come with that is truly the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that what he brings is truly the revelation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala they know it and recognize it as well as they would recognize their own children just as you when it comes to your son your daughter your children you don't need to be told much you know already who your children are and that's why sometimes you know a parent can can recognize or a close family member can recognize another family member from the back of their heads even if they're facing away from you you can just see from the shape of their body from the way that they head you can see and recognize oh that's actually my father my mother my son my daughter my brother my sister and sometimes for example if a sister's wearing a full hijab and jilbab and niqab and she's completely covered a husband can recognize his wife, a child can recognize their mother dressed in that way because of how familiar they are with them, even if they are covered up or they are at a distance or they're not facing towards them. Allah Azza wa says that because of the message or because of the signs that they were given in their scriptures of the coming of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they know him and recognize him as well as they will recognize their own children. And that is why those from amongst them who were true and sincere, the likes of, for example, Waraka ibn Nawfal, the cousin of Khadija radiallahu anha, when revelation first came, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to him and he tells him what he experienced in the mountain of Hira in the cave, Waraka immediately accepts this. He doesn't say, no, but I'm older, or but I'm more learned, or I've read the, the, the gospel and the Torah. He accepts because he recognizes instinctively that this is the truth. And he knows that it is the truth because of the scriptures that he was studying before 
this message came to the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, Abdullah ibn Salam, عن, the companion that we mentioned, who was from the learned Jewish, uh, learned men of the Jewish community of Medina, he came and he accepts Islam as well when he saw the truthfulness of the Prophet ﷺ. We have examples of the likes of Salman al-Farisi, a Christian who's going from rabbi to rabbi, from monk to monk on a long-winded journey until he eventually ends up in Medina. All because he's been told that there is a prophet that's coming and you'll find him in the lands of Arabia. And he doesn't have much information, but eventually he arrives in Medina and he sees the Prophet ﷺ and he sees upon him the signs that attest to his truthfulness that he had found within the scriptures of old and he accepts him. And so Allah says, minhum. But there will always be a group from amongst them who will hide the truth that they know. They know that it is the truth. So when someone knows that it is true and they reject it, or when someone knows that this is what Allah commands but they still refuse to accept it, that is a symptom of a greater issue and that is the symptom of their disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their rejection of Allah and his, and his worship subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah says in verse number 147, The truth is from your Lord. So do not be from amongst those who doubt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the truth is that which Allah sends. It is enough for the believer when a command comes to them to know that it is from Allah. Even if you don't understand, you don't know the wisdom, you can't make sense of it logically, it doesn't seem to compute within, with your brain. All of those things are secondary. Isn't it enough to know that it is the truth from your Lord? That if it comes from Allah Azza wa Jal, surely it must be the truth. And if it is the truth, then surely within it there is guidance and blessing and mercy and reward. It is the means of salvation. So the believer, even if certain aspects for them are difficult, because of their desires, because of their background, because of the pressures of society or the communities that they live in, they know that it is the truth from their Lord. So the people of Mecca, who had all of these, the Muslims in the early days of Mecca and even in Medina, who had all of these pressures around them, pressures of society, pressures of economy, pressures of peer pressure, all of those issues that are facing them, when the command of Allah Azza wa Jal came, they accepted. Why? Because they knew, al haqqum min Rabbik, the truth is from your Lord, and so they would not be from amongst those who doubt and those who question and those who refuse. In verse 148, Allah says, وَلِكُلِّ وُجَهَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّيهَا Each community has its own direction to which it turns. As we said before in, in the last episode, every religion has this direction that it faces. Some people Jerusalem, some people Mecca, some people elsewhere, they have their directions. This issue therefore when, when the people in the time of the Prophet ﷺ criticize and oppose this directive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not just the issue of the changing of the Qibla, but rather it is their rejection of Allah, their rejection of his revelation and the messenger, the, the prophethood of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as for you, O believers, فَاسْتَبِقُوا khayrat, Race to do whatever good deeds you can, wherever you are. That is the way of the Muslim. فَاسْتَبِقُوا khayrat, To do good, and the word istibaq means to race, compete with one another. You can only have a musabaqa when there is more than one person involved. You can't race yourself, you can't compete against yourself, you compete when there's normally one or more other people around you. And Allah Azza wa is saying, you amongst yourselves, the believers, and with the others, race and compete in the accomplishment and in the attainment of good deeds that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so our racing and competing for the dunya, which is something which is part and parcel of this life, where you compete with others in your career, in your, in your jobs, in your possessions, in, in the materialistic issues of the dunya, Allah Azza wa is saying for the believer, let him turn his focus to competing for the akhirah for racing towards what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, racing towards accumulating good deeds and good reward. Aynama takunu yati bikum Allahu jami'a for wherever you are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely bring all of you together, meaning he will resurrect you all. Wherever you happen to die, in whichever manner you will die, because we know in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there are a hadith that speak about how people who were cremated 
and the ashes were, ashes were scattered in the wind, on the ocean and on land, Allah Azza wa will gather them together and he will resurrect them. So a person who's cremated, a person who's drowned, a person who's lost, a person who's, who, who, for example, is, 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 is eaten or devoured by, by an animal or whatever it may be, all of those people Allah Azza wa will gather. And on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, every single person that lived from the time of Adam السلام, to the very last human that Allah Azza wa creates, all of them will be resurrected and brought together before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. For indeed, Allah Azza wa has power to do all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in verse 149, he repeats the command that we mentioned in the last verse. So in the last verse, Allah azza wa jal, in the last episode rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a command to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslims by extension that they should face the direction of the Qibla. The Qibla is changing. So face the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Allah azza wa jal, now for the second time will repeat this very command. Allah Azza wa Jal says in verse 149, Wherever you may have started out, then turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque. This is the truth from your Lord. He is not unaware of what you do. From the things that Allah Azza wa Jal made easy for us in this religion is that the whole of the earth is a place of prayer. As the Prophet told us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the things that, he, that were made easy or that were made special for him, This earth is a place of purification, meaning that if you can't find water, you can use the ground to make tayammum, and it is a place of prayer, with a few exceptions as we know in the books of fiqh. But generally speaking, if you're out at the park, or you're in a shopping center, or you're traveling, you're on, uh, you know, you're on a plane, wherever you are, you can stop and you can pray when it is the time of salah. And so Allah Azza wa Jal says, wherever you happen to be, then face the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. This is a command from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that is repeated, as we said, for the second time in this passage. For indeed, it is the truth from your Lord. It is the truth from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal is not unaware of that which you do. Then in verse 50, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will repeat this command for a third time. So it is being emphasized, repeated three times in this particular passage. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمِنْ حَيْثُ خَرَجَتَ فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرَةِ Wherever you may have started out, turn your face in the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, the sacred mosque in Mecca, wherever any of you may be, then turn your face towards it as well. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gives a repeat command here, in this one verse, one, firstly addressing the Prophet وسلم, directly, وَمِنْ حَيْثُ خَرَجْتَ فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ When you, O Messenger of Allah, wherever you may be, then you turn your face. And the second time, وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ Wherever you collectively, meaning O Muslims are, فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Then you also collectively turn your face towards the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَيْكُمْ حُجَّةٌ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْهُمْ So that those people who have no argument against you, except for the wrongdoers amongst them, so that they will be, so that they may have no argument against you, except for the wrongdoers amongst them. Allah Azza wa Jal, why does He repeat this command three times? As we said, this incident caused issues. Caused issues for the non-Muslims that were living in that region at that time. And also it was a test for the believers in terms of their Iman, in terms of their submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And because of this, Allah azza wa repeats the command three times to show that this is something which is final. That it is not just something which is temporary, not just something which you do for a few days and weeks and then you go back. It is to show that this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is final. And that Allah azza wa jal commands as he wishes subhanahu wa ta'ala and his legislation is final. And it shows therefore that if it is beneficial to repeat something a number of times as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do, when he would be giving commands or he would be teaching, sometimes he would repeat something three times in order to emphasize it. And that is something which you find here now as a principle in the Quran. And that is why often in our du'as, for example, in Ramadan, in the witr prayer, you will often hear the imam making a du'a and repeating it three times. 
that repetition is for emphasis. It is a repetition to show in that particular instance and scenario a need for, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that dua to be answered. Allah Azza wa says, lest that the people should have an argument over you. As we mentioned in the last episode, the argument being referred to here over the Muslims is that the people of, or the Jews and the Christians would say that these Muslims are kind of following us. They're trailing behind, trying to copy us, trying to emulate us. And that's why they face our Qibla in Jerusalem. Whereas the Mushrikeen of the Arabs, the pagans of, of Mecca and, and, and Arabia in general were saying, what kind of religion is this that claims to honor the Kaaba, claims to honor the Haram, claims to honor and follow in the footsteps of Ibrahim السلام, and they have disregarded the Kaaba. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated that the prayer should be done towards the Kaaba. And we know that from the great uh, wisdoms and blessings of this is that the Muslims will make the Kaaba their holiest place. It's the place where we go for pilgrimage, for Umrah and for Hajj. And so therefore everything in our religion in terms of those amazing and major acts of worship are centered around the Kaaba. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this a place that is exclusively for the Muslims. Whereas Jerusalem, as we know, the Muslims, they claim to it. The Jews, they claim to it. The Christians, they claim to it. It is a place that has uh, venerated sites for all of those religions. However, the Kaaba, no one else lays claim to it. No other religion claims and says that we have a portion of it or not a portion of it. It is something which Allah Azza wa Jal made specifically for the Muslims. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says commanding the believers then, فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ مَخْشَوْنِ So do not fear them, but rather fear me, Allah says. Don't worry about what they say. Don't worry about their, their issues and their arguments and their justifications. Don't worry about the debates that they want to have or the criticism that they level against you and your religion. Rather fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is an amazing command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because how often are we in a situation, for example, where we're in public and it's now the time to pray. And we can find a space and we can find a place to pray. But because there's people around us, people may look at us funnily or people may, it's not, you know, and it's safe for us to pray. I'm not saying it's a place that may be dangerous or it's not wise to pray in that place. No, it's a place that is perfectly safe, inshallah, to pray. But we choose not to do so because we know that people may look down upon us or that people will look at us in a funny way. That is a choice that we have. And so we choose whether we want to fear Allah Azza wa Jal more in that regard or other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And you can say the same in every single instance of a similar nature. Often we're given or we're in a situation, we're in a scenario where we have this choice. Do what is pleasing to Allah or choose what is pleasing towards others. Sometimes those others are our own family members and so that makes it extremely difficult. Sometimes it's our relatives and our friends and our neighbors, so that pressure is there. Sometimes it is society in general. Sometimes it is our own desires because we want wealth or we want position or we want career. And we know that as a result of it, we will be doing certain things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ Why do you fear them? فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي بَرَادَ فِيرَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And then Allah concludes this verse 150 وَلِأُتِمَّ نِعْمَتِي عَلَيْكُمْ مَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ And so that I may perfect my favor upon you and that you may be guided. To fear Allah Azza wa Jal, to follow the command of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, to do that which is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal, it is always, always from the blessing of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and it is always the path of guidance. So the path of guidance is always to choose that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because by doing so, you have turned to Allah azza wa jal and uh, gone towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal in verse 151, he continues and he says, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ just as we have sent amongst you a messenger of your own to recite our revelations to you, purify you, and teach you the scripture and wisdom and other things that you did not know. Meaning that just as Allah Azza wa Jal, as he said in the previous verse, Just as Allah bestowed his blessings upon you that you may be guided, then likewise did Allah Azza wa Jal also send upon you one of his greatest blessings, and that is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us. From the greatest of Allah's blessing is to show us the path to guidance. So when Allah says, pray in this way, fast in this way, these are the actions, these are the actions that are most pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that is from the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal and the paths of guidance. And from the greatest blessings of Allah, 
because there is not just one or two or three or a limited number of, of blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us from the greatest of Allah's blessings is that he sent to you a messenger from amongst you. You know him by his family and his lineage. You know him in terms of his upbringing and his character. You know him in terms of his truthfulness, his honesty, his integrity. He will sent from you a messenger that will recite to you from our verses, from the Quran that he was given, from the verses that Allah Azza wa sent to him that show the path of guidance and show how to stay away from misguidance. Show to you the path that is pleasing to Allah Azza wa and show to you how to stay away from the paths that are displeasing to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And what does that revelation do? What does that teaching do? Yuzakikum. It purifies you in your character, in your soul, in your heart, in your dealings. It purifies you and makes you better and greater than others. Uh, others around you. وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And Allah, and he said, and Allah Azza wa Jal says that he teaches you from the book and the wisdom. The wisdom being the sunnah or being the understanding of the sharia and its wisdoms and its rulings and so on. وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ And he will teach you much of that which you did not know. Because we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought for us knowledge that no other Prophet of Allah was given in terms of Yawm Al-Qiyamah and in terms of the paradise and the fire and in terms of the stories of the nations that came before all of this knowledge of the unseen that was given to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Azza wa Jal then in the final two verses on this page, page number 23, he gives us a command of how we should do this. Because it is difficult to always worship Allah, to look for the path of guidance, to always constantly be the one who fears Allah not fears others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to us four things in these last two verses that we can do. And they are amazing in each and every single one of them in their own right. The first two Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in verse 152. Allah says, so remember me, I will remember you. From the greatest ways of always doing that which is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal, is to constantly be in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal promises that those who remember him, Allah will remember them. If you remember Allah Azza wa Jal and you're mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah remembers you, meaning Allah will give you his divine aid and his divine assistance. Allah will bless you, Allah will shower his mercy and forgiveness upon you. And even when you do a uh, you do make mistakes, you fall into sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you towards the path of tawbah and repentance. That's the first thing. Make the dhikr of Allah azza wa jal. From the moment that you wake up, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the moment that you sleep at night. Remember Allah azza wa jal by reciting the Quran, by making dua, by making the adhkar, by saying subhanallah. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. All of the different adhkar that we have. And if you're diligent in your adhkar of the morning, the evening, the bathroom, the house, the masjid, all of these different adhkar and du'as that we have, then you're constantly remembering Allah Azza wa Jal and being mindful of Him. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, those who remember Him in times of ease, Allah remembers them in times of difficulty. And those who remember Allah Azza wa Jal openly amongst others, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala remembers them openly in a company that is better than any company upon earth. The second thing, be thankful to Allah and never be ungrateful. Thank Allah for his blessings. Thank Allah for his guidance. Thank Allah for the Quran and for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thank Allah that he allowed you to go to the uh, to, to understand his religion, to follow his sharia, to follow his commands. Thank Allah Azza wa Jal that when the vast majority of mankind are in darkness and misguidance, Allah chose you and he gave you that blessing of guidance and that blessing of light. In the final verse on this page in 153, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the other two things that we can do. Allah azza wa jal says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sta'eenu bis sabri was salah inna Allah ma'as sabirin O you who believe, seek help through patience and steadfastness and through salah and prayer. <coughs> Allah azza wa jal tells us that one of the greatest ways that we can overcome the challenges of the dunya, remain steadfast upon the region of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow through on the commandments of Allah azza wa jal, is to embody patience within us, to be people of steadfastness. One of the biggest issues is that we lack patience, that we're very easy, easily swayed, 
There were people who, when we see the first sign of discomfort or trial or difficulty or pain or test, were people who want to run away and want to just kind of give up. And that is not the trait of the believers. Throughout the Quran and throughout the Sunnah, we have countless examples of Prophets of Allah, and in our case, the companions of the Prophet as well, of how they had to remain steadfast in patience in the face of harm, in the face of oppression, in the face of people who oppose them openly and violently. Many of us are very fortunate that we live in countries and places where we can worship our religion for the most part without any difficulty, without any obstruction. We don't have fear of our families and our safety and our wealth and so on. And we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our ability. But even if that wasn't the case, be people of patience. Patience when you're worshiping Allah azza wa jal. Patience staying away from the haram and the disobedience of Allah. And patience with all of Allah's decrees and that which Allah azza wa jal puts in your way in terms of tests and hardships, challenges. And turn to Allah azza wa jal in salah. Because the salah is the link between Allah azza wa jal and between us. The salah is the place where you turn to Allah in dua and in Quran and in dhikr and you ask Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you as a result of that salah. Then the Prophet tell us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the closest place that we can be to Allah Azza wa Jal in this world is when we're in sujood. Aqrabu ma yakunul abdu min rabbihi wa huwa sajid. Once you're making sujood. That is the closest place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer seeks contentment, seeks help, seeks peace, seeks blessing through the salah and through patience. Look at these amazing, uh, amazing uh, actions that Allah Azza wa Jal recommends that we perform. Dhikr, gratitude, patience, salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after telling us that yes, sometimes you will have opposition, difficulty, challenge, hardship, people that oppose you, people that may want to harm you, turn to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because those who are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never be defeated if Allah Azza wa Jal is with them. And so long as you turn to Allah Azza wa Jal sincerely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forsake you. The common denominator between all of them is that it requires patience. These four things, all of them require patience. They require you to constantly be mindful and constantly make the inner struggle and strive, make the inner jihad of wanting to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come closer to him. And at every turn and way when shaitan comes or your desires attempt to overpower you, then you turn away from them and you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal concludes this verse by saying, Inna Allah sabirin Indeed Allah is with the patient. And that is an amazing uh, end to this verse. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying he is with them. And if Allah is with you, then who can possibly oppose you? Who can defeat you even if all of the world and everyone in existence stood opposed to you, but Allah Azza wa Jal was with you, then how could Allah how could you ever be defeated? And that is why the Prophet وسلم, told us in a number of a hadith that those people who are with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. And those who remember Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal remembers them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of patience and remembrance and the people of salah and gratitude. Barakallahu fikum wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim